Hello, my name is Lenny and this is RTB Models uh, in association with Frontline Model Hobbies. And this video is going to be the first in what we're going to be showing you is how we do certain sort of like genres, as in cockpits, undercarriages and all that kind of stuff, um, but from different nations. Um, this being the um, Royal Air Force modern sort of like cockpit type thing and it's all modelled on this little thing here. Yes, the Tulare 132nd scale Tornado GR4. So, what we'll do is, on this video and the next three, we'll look at the cockpits and go from there, okay? So if there's any questions, feel free to chuck them my way, inbox me, DM, PM, whatever you want to call, and uh, we'll go from there, okay? So, sit back, have a look, see what you think. So yeah. Ta -da. Right, so you get started then with the Martin Baker uh, Mark 10 uh, Ejector Z. And basically what we'll do is, is very quickly go through the construction of um, the Ejector seat. It is pretty self-explanatory um, when you go through the actual instructions. It is quite a multi-part um, Ejector seat and it goes together rather, rather well. And if I must say, it's probably the nicest detailed Ejector seat I've seen in a scale this size without it being sort of like aftermarket type stuff. But anyway, have a look, see what you think, and we'll go from there. So as you can see on the instructions, it is quite a multi-part affair. Uh, you've got the two sides, um, you've got the, the seat part itself, and then you've got the back plate. But also you've got uh, a photo etch set for the actual um, harnesses. But now here you've got the back plate, and basically it is quite thick metal. So what you need to do is, is be careful when you're taking it up, actually off the fret. Um, using a bending pliers, just bending them around. So you've got the attachment points that will actually go onto the actual back of the ejector seat and using uh, MIG Ammo's Ultra Glue, you just put a few spots onto where the backing plate will anchor and onto where the bolts are, and it fits really well, and it sticks. Right then, on to the painting stage. Um, basically what I've done to prime it is to use um, XF24, which is a dark gray, which gives me a, a nice sort of like base to actually use the lighter grays. So basically what I've done, I've started off using a dark gold gray, um, just to give me sort of like a, a base color, as it were. And then I can work on that um, using a light gold gray, just to do some highlights. So basically what I've done is, is just started off doing in patches, just making it look a little bit more um, used, as it were, um, as in not being fired out of the plane, but used by the crew and other servicing personnel. I'm using um, Hataka's Orange Line paints for this, um, the lacquer paints, which is a dark gold gray, which is actually the actual color of um, the cockpit and ejector seats. Um, but you can use XF54, which is a very good match for it. Um, but how, here we go, we're gonna be using the light gold gray, which I'm just gonna be using to do some touch-ups um, and lighten up some of the sort of like the um, higher parts as it were of the actual ejector seats.
here what I'm doing is I'm just using the light gold grey um, but actually laying it on just a little bit more thicker um, just to give that more of a contrast um, between um, the top side of the actual ejector seat and to the bottom. So basically um, you basically you're using shadows or you're making shadows um, as you actually go along. Right then, moving on to dry brushing. Uh, for this, I'm using uh, Tamiya's XF19, uh, which is a sky gray, which is a, an even lighter gray that we have been using. Um, I do quite like doing the dry brushing because what it does, it makes the kit part um, with the details on it just pop out and give it a bit more character and a bit more of a, a dimension or dimensional, as it were. Um, but yeah, you can also use it as a sort of like a weathering technique, which you can sort of like use scratches or where the pilots or the crew have been, or even the service personnel have come in and out of the actual craft itself and just wearing the paint off very, very slightly. But yeah, it's a good technique and it's very, very valuable for your actual uh, end result, as it were. The kit does come with its own um, set of photo edge, but uh, for this one I've been using the Eddard um, set or the seat harness set for this particular kit um, and it does work really, really well. It's nice, it's really sort of like crisp and it really sets off the cockpit once it's all finished. Unfortunately, the kit doesn't actually come in with uh, decals um, to actually do with the ejector seat. So what I've had to do is, is take um, some stenciling from uh, an F14 of all things um, and actually put it on the actual ejector seats. Um, not completely accurate however it's something to sort of like brighten it up and add a little bit more detail. Once the actual decals were on um, I did use uh, a setting solution which is the Meg Ammo decal fix which is the ultra one. It works really well um, with those particular decals and with the ones I've already used for uh, the Atelari, um decals in the kit, it does work really, really well. So weathering wise, I'm using uh, a deep grey um, for this one, Paneline Wash from Mig Ammo. And it is just a question of just popping it onto the brush and sticking it over all the recessed areas um, onto the actual ejector seat. Um, it is really nice stuff. And although there are some parts of the ejector seat which you're not going to see, I would actually do it anyway because the one thing you don't want to do is have something where it's not been covered so anyway just tap and flow you'll be fine and it looks really really good when you are finished Right, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, hopefully you've learned something. Um, if you have, that's fantastic because that means this video has paid for itself. So yeah, anyway, on to the next video um, where you'll see something else with the cockpit, I think. Anyway, um, just to let you know as well, um, in the description below, you'll have a link and that will link you to other um, cockpits and other type of things that we're doing. Um, Rob Bedford will be doing um, at the moment at the time of this video um, three not one but three um, ME262 um, cockpits uh, in one thirty second scale and I'll go through different ways of actually painting weathering um, all those three but also he's doing the modern um, US cockpits um, being the MV uh, Osprey, which is the 148 scale one that's new at the time of this video ish of um, the Hobby Boss um, version. Okay, so pop yourself down there on the old link, go and have a look, and, uh, and yeah, hopefully, you learned something.
So yeah, cool beans. Right, I'm off. Um, I've got things to do, as in building. So until then, happy modelling. Take yourself off to the old bench. Take care, and uh, yeah, I'll see you soon. Ta-da.